What's up guys, in this video, I wanna cover how to solve a simultaneous equation using linear and a quadratic equation. Okay, now one of the mistakes I see students make is they wanna go ahead and apply elimination to a problem like this. Now, you actually can do that. What you'd wanna do is actually rearrange them. What you're gonna to need to do is you're gonna to have to eliminate the y variable because notice that even though I have x's here, this is an x squared and this is a linear and this is an x. So they're not like terms. So therefore we can't eliminate the x. You could, if you wanted to, eliminate the y. But in this example, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna use substitution. And the reason why I like substitution is because I think it takes us to our third equation where we only have one variable much quicker if we are going to use the elimination method. So what I'm gonna do is I recognize here, and again, like the reason why substitution is usually gonna be my preferred method here is again, notice that I have a coefficient of one for my y. Right? So whenever I see a coefficient of one for a variable, immediately that comes to my brain of like, I wanna solve for that variable, right? And then apply the substitution process. And if I'm not dealing with a one or sometimes even a negative one, then elimination might be something I would consider. But in this problem, let's just go ahead and solve for y. And you can see solving for y was pretty simple, right? I just had to add the x to the both sides. Now again, here's what's important here. Y is equal to parentheses x plus three. Now, why am I putting parentheses around there? The reason why I'm putting parentheses around there is because it's one of the most common mistakes students will make is when they plug in x plus three in for this y, they forget to put parentheses around that. And if you forget to use parentheses, you're going to forget to use multiplication. Now, first equation, second equation. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug in the value of y, which is x plus three, into this um, second equation to um, now obtain a third equation. Okay, so what I want you to see is we had our original equation, our second equation, and now we created our third equation. Now again, I manipulated equation number one, right, to solve for a variable, but it was fairly simple. Then I plugged in equation number one into equation number three, uh, or equation number two, to obtain equation number three. Now what's so important about equation number three? Well, look how cool it is, guys, right? Again, like now I only have x's, so I know I can go ahead and solve this. Now, the important thing is here, as long as I applied my parentheses, as long as I use these parentheses, I know I'm gonna have to apply my multiplication, and now I can easily kind of simplify this out. Okay, and now you recognize this is a quadratic, and remember, when we wanna solve quadratics, what do we can do? We need to set it equal to zero. So go ahead and subtract the nine to both sides, and then it's going to be set equal to zero. Okay, so now we have a quadratic equation, set equal to zero. Now I gotta think to myself, what two numbers multiplied to give me a negative three are going to add, give me a positive two. Um, that in the case, I'm looking at a positive three and a negative one. Okay, so now what I did is I just used the zero product property, set them both equal to zero, and then went ahead and solved. Now, a lot of times students will say like, okay, I'm done. Right, but we gotta think about like, just don't automatically go to the answer. I think understanding the graphical approach of what you're doing when solving simultaneous equations is very important. Remember guys, this was a linear equation, right? I don't know what that graph looks like, but let's just pretend, you know, it looks something like this. And then this next example is a quadratic equation, right? If you were to solve for y here, you would have some sort of quadratic. Now again, I don't know what this quadratic looks like, but let's just kind of write a hypothetical. Now, is it possible that actually the quadratic and the linear equation could not intersect and we'd have no solution? Absolutely. But in this case, since we found our x and our y, we know there's actually a solution that does exist. It could also, we could actually also have a point where that it intersects at a tangent line. So it is possible to actually have an equation where there's only one solution. But in this case, we know there's not two solutions, right? We know there's two points of intersection. But please do not just rely on like, oh, I found the x and I feel like I'm done. Remember, once you solve the x, you gotta go and solve for y. And here is why I prefer to use substitution in this problem rather than using elimination at the beginning. Because look what we did here, guys, for this equation number one, right? We already isolated it for y. So half of my work now is already done for me. So if I wanna go ahead and take a look at my solution points, if I wanna find, well, what is the y coordinate, right? x is equal to three, then what is y? So all you're simply gonna do is just take a y is equal to three plus three, which equals a six. So now I have a coordinate point three comma six. And what about when x equals negative one? Y equals negative one plus three, right? And then, so therefore that's gonna equal a, oh wait, I made a mistake here. So this is actually factored wrong. So that actually should be a positive three and this should be a negative one, right? Because that's gonna be negative three. Okay, so this is actually a negative three and that's a positive one. So therefore, actually, this is gonna be a negative three plus three, which is going to be a zero. And in this case, I'm going to add a one plus three is actually going to give me a four. So now this corner point is going to be a one comma four, make that a negative, and there you go. 
It's always good to be able to check your work and don't factor so quickly because that's an easy mistake that you should not be making just like me. But sometimes it happens. So you just gotta make sure you're aware of it and immediately sometimes always think and check your work in your brain as you're going through the problem. Now this problem was pretty cool, recognizing a linear equation and a parabola. But what about when you have two equations that are both going to be quadratic? How would you solve a simultaneous equation like that? That's coming up in the next video.